Hello, welcome to the Ralph the Movie Maker podcast. I'm joined by my guest Cam. And as I said last episode, we're here to talk about Fantastic Four. <laughs> by the way, podcast is now on Spotify, so you can listen to it there. Um, what's up, Cam? How are you? Good, Ralph. I, I am fantastic. How are you, Ralph? <laughs> I'm fantastic, too. Thanks for coming on my show. Thanks for having me. You're uh, the official first guest of many. There we go. You can have all of every single Fantastic Four. But you can have the Human Torch on next. Yeah, I could have all the Channel Awesome people. <laughs> I wouldn't. I could have him. Dog on and Spoonie. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have more options beyond those guys, personally. Um. So I want to talk about Fantastic Four with you. They announced a new um show, or no, it's a movie. They announced yeah. a new movie. It's directed by the guy who made WandaVision, which is a show. That's why I, I, is he confused. still the director, though? I wasn't sure if he... Oh, is, is he not anymore? Did he back he, he, away he from He might it? not be. I'm not sure. I th- he might be it was on... originally the guy who did Spider-Man, the three Spider-Mans. John um, Watts, right. But I guess he right. wanted to mix it up a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, so I was like, okay, it's a perfect time to like talk about Fantastic Four because there's a new one coming out. So it's a good time to do the retrospective. Um, we can mention briefly that there was a Fantastic Four movie in the '90s directed by Roger Corman. I, I don't know. If, I don't think he directed. I think he just produced. Oh, oh yeah, pre- produced by Roger Corman. It's directed by basically Alan Smithies, but it's directed by nobody. <laughs> no one gives a sure. shit about. <laughs> For the- um, it doesn't matter who directed. It's terrible. As far as we know, yeah, I don't think it was ever officially released. Uh, for no. those who don't know, uh, like Roger Corman was famous for producing a lot of B movies. I think like even like sixties. Like he's been around a long time. He's like ninety something years old now. He, you know, he helped like Jack Nicholson get a start, and like a lot of those guys, like the new Hollywood actors. Like he worked with Coppola. He's at, uh, Roger Corman is actually in. Um, if people remember from Godfather Part Two, when Michael's on trial, like the big board, he's one of the guys in the on the board there. That's like questioning yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the movie's never released, right? I yeah. I saw it many years ago. I haven't rewatched it recently. Like I didn't rewatch it for this. I figured it's just a waste of time. No one's gonna care about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't watch it either. That's nah, totally I didn't fine. get a chance. It, it's, it, but like, <laughs> what's still? I've never seen like any clips of it really, but I've seen stills. It looks like it was made in 1975. Like you would never think like it was like, only yeah. made like a few years before you and I were born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It looks like a really cheap TV movie or something. Yeah, maybe um, it was the way so, it was filmed or so. Yeah, it's just a cheap movie. Yeah. Uh, the thing still looks better in that one than he does in the Josh Trank one, but I guess we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. Um, so starting with the first one, which is I think two thousand three or five. Two thousand two thousand five. Really, that was the yeah. first one. Okay. Yeah, it came and out. It's a directed month. by. Sorry. It came. Sorry, it came out a month after Batman Begins, which I don't think did it any favors <laughs> by comparison. Well, yeah, they both came out. Like even the the Rise of Silver Surfer, they both came out in years that are like, they were better movies. <laughs> yeah, in like, Silver Surfer's case, like two thousand seven, that's a famous year. Like There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. And... Yeah, but even just superhero movies, like we were talking about Spider Man three, and everyone everyone's like, oh, Spider Man three is terrible. Like I'd rather watch Spider Man three over uh, Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer. Oh yeah, it's better than any of these movies, and easily, <laughs> yeah. like not even like a comparison. Mm-hmm. Um. It's directed by Tim Story, both of them. Mm-hmm. He, he reminds me of a... Uh, who's the guy who did Ant-Man? Um, <laughs> Not Payton, as bad. Peyton Reed. I th- is that he's like name? a studio yeah. kind of yes man kind of guy. He's, you, you know, like a like an industry hack, like Brett Ratner. Well, like, uh, you know... <laughs> who's another Brett guy. Brett Ratner is a creep. We don't have to mention <laughs> Yeah, he's another creep. I mean, I mean um, yeah, did, well, like, I'm just talking about the movies, though. Tim Story also did, like... He mostly did comedies. I think he did like Barbershop and I think like the Ride Along movies. I, this is I, these two are the only movies I've seen of his. <laughs> yeah, he he didn't really do a lot, um, but they gave him Fantastic Four. Once it was over, you, you said you hated it, which is funny. But I'm like, Cam, you just saw the best movie out of the out of the three <laughs> because yeah. they do get progressively worse as they go along they get worse and worse and worse like you you think you think you saw the worst of it 
but that's only like the top of the shit pile. Like you just and you keep sliding down. Mm-hmm. Like it prog- the series progressively gets worse, not just movie by movie, but almost like minute by minute. Like every minute that goes by, like gets progressively worse. Like even even the Josh Trank one, like the last half hour of it is worse than the first hour of it. It's like yeah. I noticed this. I'm like this series, like it just gave up. Pretty, pretty much like there hasn't been a <laughs> successful entry. But we'll see how the 2024 20, one plays out. I'm sure it'll be better. I'm, I'm not gonna if wait. anyone's going to do it right, it would be Marvel Studios. Like, I have the most faith in them making a Fantastic Four movie. But it's very difficult to make a movie with these characters, I've realized at this point. They've tried it many times. It's never worked. There's been other problems, you know, this problem was in the industry is, you know, I think we'll talk about this movie, like kind of, kind of the, I don't know, like the, the one dimensional characters, like there was a different standard for superhero movies back then than there are now. Like it, it, those kind of movies have like reinvented themselves. Like we've had movies like Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. It's like, okay, they, people have stepped up their game. Now we have Infinity War, right? So it's like, it, there's, there's a higher yeah. quality expectation now. Than I think there was back then. Back then they're like, you know, it's a stupid movie. It's made for kids. We don't need to try. Um, we'll get into the, the Jessica Alba character as well because that character is like really bad. <laughs> like how invisible they like portray girl, her. Invisible woman, or whatever they call the her. invisible girl, right? Which is just kind of show you like I'm yeah, sure she... in the new film they'll make her the invisible woman. Yeah, which uh, yeah that works. Or funny. if they do the girl thing, they'll make it like cutesy. Or, um, <laughs> like you know like oh you're the invisible girl make it like a joke R- i guess right. that's kind of what they do in these it just doesn't work like at all Not, none of the jokes work for me i don't think i laughed at all <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> i was laughing at your torment right because uh <laughs> we should point out you, you saw the first two when they came out right i i did not i just watched yeah. them last week people like um rise of silver surfer a little more I think that's, you know, that might be true. I like the first one the best out of any of these because I think I have, like, a nostalgic love for it. Like, a nostalgic... Like, I saw it as a kid. I liked it. I'm like, oh, it's fun. Yeah. It's a Fantastic Four. I do think there are some cool scenes in it, like the scene where the thing um, rescues the people on the bridge. That was probably the best um, sequence. Yeah, because it's like... I like the hero scenes where the hero isn't fighting a villain. Spider-Man has scenes like that too, where it's just like there's there's an accident or something and Spider-Man or or the thing in this case has to like save someone. And I like the a shot of him like ramming his like shoulder into the truck and it crashes and I'm like, "Oh, that was like a cool effect shot. It's definitely more than you'd see in something now where they did it like practically. They I think yeah. they put like a pole in the ground and then like drove a truck into it and then they composited Michael Chiklis in there, you know. <laughs> Um, you mentioned the whole Michael Chiklis thing where um, he keeps addressing Victor as Vic. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> which we can explain. Uh, Michael Chiklis is a, a great actor. He's from Andover, my hometown, Andover, Massachusetts. Yeah. And um, he was most most recently he'd been around for a while, but he was famous for the show The Shield, uh, which is a great classic show. If people like mm-hmm. we're looking for something to watch, it's on Hulu. And I watched played... it on your recommendation, and I, yeah, it's great so far. I'm on like season five. It's a great show, and he's really yeah. good at it. Yeah. He's some yeah. he has some great lines. It's like one of those classic like characters that has like a lot of great lines. Yeah, he's a yeah. dirty cop, and um, his yeah. character's name Vic Mackey. And then in this movie, he keeps referring to Doctor Victor Von Doom as Vic, which I get that <laughs> yeah. that, that character's name. <laughs> it's existed really before. confusing, but yeah, it's just funny. Like he keeps saying Vic, Vic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that's something I wouldn't have even picked up on really. But yeah, this movie, it is stupid, but I also kind of feel it's harmless. Um, it's, I'm not defending it. It's pretty bad. I mean, it was pretty yeah. hard to sit through. It's, it's, it is, though, like, the fact that it is so cartoony and silly makes it so hard for me to take it seriously. I ended up laughing, like, a fair amount at, like, very silly parts of it. Um, uh, to mention another television actor... Um, I'll look up her name maybe while you talk about something. Andrea from The Walking Dead plays like um, the thing's wife. Oh, uh, who's Laurie Holden. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Um, well, she's sure. in like two scenes in the movie. She's like completely wasted, even though she's a good actor. <laughs> yeah, and she plays like this whole um, yeah, yeah sure. this whole like thing where like once the, the this whole thing once once the thing becomes like a rock monster or whatever. Once Michael Chiklis becomes the rock monster, um, he's like. He, he he wears a trench coat <laughs> and he calls her outside and she comes out in the street in lingerie and he like what right, is yeah is, she's not she's not wearing a lot when she comes she's wearing like a, like a nighty yeah like a nightgown yeah. right like like barely anything and she's walking in the middle of the street in new york city like she's lucky she didn't get like assaulted by a homeless man or something oh, and it, the street looks like it's filmed in canada like it yeah, doesn't look yeah, like new york look city like, it looks like vancouver it looks like fucking yeah. It looks like Toronto or something. And then she comes out, and and you know uh, Michael Chiklis is there as the rock monster in in a trench coat, and he sounds like Scorch. <laughs> He's oh, I'm, a, I'm the GC <laughs> Lucky Buddha beer, <laughs> and it's like really corny scene. And she's like terrified of him, and she runs away. And then some random guy on the streets like. Hey, what are you doing bothering that woman? And then <laughs> they call the cops on him like right away and he he runs away. Yeah, he just um, like stand on there. He's not doing much. He's just yeah. he's transformed into a rock man. Yeah. Uh we don't have to go in order. I'm just talking about the thing's character here. Um we have the scene in the bridge where he rescues people. Yeah. Um uh Lori Holden shows up for no reason. On the bridge after he saves everybody. She got there really quickly. <laughs> and she puts her wedding ring on the ground. And the yeah. thing tries to pick it up. But his fingers are too big. The tragedy it, of it all. That might be the funniest part of the movie. His what? big... He has four fingers. <laughs> That's how big his hands are. It, should, it could have made him like the penguin. He's just got like, you know... <laughs> That's basically how it's like. That's basically what it's like. It's like he's the penguin. And he tries to pick up the ring. But his fingers are too big. And then Reed picks it up for him. Man, that was that was really funny watching it again. I'm like, this this movie is so stupid. Like, and then uh, <laughs> she never shows up again. But he does find romance with uh, Carrie Washington. So I guess the moral of the story is, uh, if you become a rock monster, some random woman, random beautiful woman, will fall in love with you at a bar. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's got a big dick, big rock dick. R rock man. We sh we could mention too. Uh, uh, Jumping ahead a bit, but in the, in the Josh Trank one, uh, the uh, the thing has no pants at all. He's oh yeah, completely naked. Yeah, I guess we'll get to that. <laughs> he looks really weird in that movie. Uh, they should have given him pants because the thing about this movie, like he does look silly in the trench coat, mm -hmm. and um, in the second movie he looks like he shopped at the Gap or something. Yeah, he's got a big uh, giant he's got, t shirts. Yeah. yeah, he's got like a yeah, it, but it does humanize him a bit. To where mm -hmm. you're like, all right, he's at least just like a normal dude. He's like, all right, I'm not gonna walk around with no shirt on or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is not something they do in the Josh Trank one at all. No, he's just like a pile um, of bricks with a face. Yeah. So the thing's whole like arc in this film, like in the first one, the the first Tim Story one, is that he is, uh, you know, he's ugly. He doesn't fit in anymore. The only person who loves him is, like, Carrie Washington, who's blind. We didn't mention that. Like, she's blind. Yeah. That's why she doesn't care about the fact that he's a rock monster. Even though she could probably, like, feel his skin and be like, oh, this guy's, like, a rock monster. Maybe I can do yeah. better. I, re I read Roger Ebert's review. He said, like, he probably feels like a driveway. It's like <laughs> pavement. And, you know, yeah, huge like, crevices and all over yeah. his body. He can he, he, of... he can barely eat. He just like eats, like the the uh, what do you call it? Like the things, the prongs on a fork. He like bites them off. Yeah, that's like one of the many dumb gags in this movie. There are a lot. He can't fit in the elevator, or like that. It's too heavy with him in the elevator. So yeah, like, right. That one scene in particular where he eats the pieces of the fork or whatever. That's like. There's like a hundred visual gags in that scene. This is like I, not a hundred, but it's like that whole scene is just like constant visual gags. Like I think the Human Torch does something, like he he smokes something up, or like he caught, catches something on fire. He keeps like going shit, like, like whoa, like, yeah, like, yeah. It's like shit fire. like that just like keeps happening. It's like Jesus Christ, like there's just so many dumb jokes just thrown into the scene. It's like you can't take it seriously at all. Yeah, it, it feels like very. This applies to both movies. Both, like both the Tim Story ones, not just like the first one, but like there's certain points where like Mr. Fantastic gets squashed, and it's just like kind of like Wiley e. Coyotes is like flat. <laughs> well, he's like, supposed to put his put his hands under the under the door, the door. 
yeah, like, like wouldn't that right hurt? Door. Yeah, yeah. You, you st- I understand he's flexible, but like you're still like <laughs> physically putting your hand into like what like a couple centimeters of space. They don't explain the powers well at all. It I just guess doesn't make. It just kind of yeah. goes with the flow, and at certain points, particularly in the second one, like Invisible Woman, she's not really that invisible. She's kind of just like trans. You can still see the outline. It feels like the like they're worried like the audience wouldn't know. It, it she's depends there. on the shot. Yeah, it depends but, on like, the shot. You're not really invisible if you can still like make out your like silhouette. You know, what I mean? like as opposed to like literally like if I wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> sitting. I don't. Yeah. It it just doesn't. It's just stupid shit. Like it just doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, whatever. It's for kids. Like, don't even think about it. Um, the Human Torch in this movie is is terrible. It's Chris Evans who goes on yeah. to play much better superheroes. Captain with, like, America, right? Yeah, much. Better He's got the scene with Maria Menounos, and they're they're skating. But they're, they're both from Mass. Like, they're also from Massachusetts, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they're both skating, and and he's like. You're or no, he's like catching on fire. He's becoming the human torch. He's like, You're on fire. He's like, Thanks. Like, no, you're literally on fire. Yeah. And they do tons of shit like that. There's tons of jokes. Like invisible girl going like, Am I invisible to you? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. I can't even see you right like I'm looking through you right now. Like <laughs> Yeah, but he's like, like, No, you're literally invisible. Oh. <laughs> it's like holy shit, dude. This is like Re- yeah. This is like for really little kids. Like you can't like as an adult, you're just like this is just fucking stupid. Like it, you can't it, take it's it seriously. Very silly. Um, I, yeah. I know that's like you know sometimes like an issue people have with the the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies that they could be kind of campy, but they're at least like a bit more like tonally consistent. There isn't like they're not as campy silly as jokes like yeah. in the climax of the movie. You know they play uh-huh. it pretty straight. At least right. like there's like yeah. There was um, since we mentioned Spider Man, like to compare, like in, in the first Spider Man, where like uh, you know, Peter he goes to the the wrestling match because he wants to win the money. At least it's like relevant. It's like the first time he gets to, like really show off his powers, like try to control them. That's where he gets the name. That's where like you know Bruce Campbell calls him Spider Man, and, and yeah, it, of course it leads into like Uncle Ben getting killed. Whereas in this, in the first Fantastic Four, Chris Evans just decides like I want to go to, like. The X Games or like ride a bike and then like show up. Like, what is it? At the, you can like cut it out of the movie entirely. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, that's when he shows off the suit. Right. He's like, this is our this. suit. And then Invisible goes like, who made that? And then Reed is like, hmm. He hides like, because he made it. He's like hiding his logo or whatever. And yeah. you forgot to mention that scene. There's a, that's like the most product placement I, like I've ever seen in a scene. It's like, I, I forgot King. exactly. Burger King, Gatorade, like bunch of shit like in the background. Family Guy because no, it's also no a Kia. Fox property. Yeah, yeah, it's Fox. Remember the yeah, time like... I rent the Human Torch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can picture that scene. <laughs> oh, it's just like really lame. Yeah, um, dates the, the Reed movie. character sucks. His his arc Reed is that he like invisible woman wants to be with him and. Like, but he's he has no confidence in himself, and it's just about like him like gaining confidence, I guess, to be with the invisible woman and ask her if he wants to like get married or like something like that. It's yeah. just so like okay, that's that's I guess something, but it's not interesting. Johan you know? Griffith, I think is how you pronounce his name. The play Mister Fantastic. The, the actor, I like the actor. I mean, they yeah. gave him the gray streaks like he does in the cartoon or the comic or whatever. Yeah, you know, they they try with him, but it just doesn't work. Like he's supposed to be the leader. He's supposed to be like kind of the main character, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But I ended up liking Michael Chiklis more. I mean, I don't even know if he's supposed to be the main character. That that's like one of the I, big it, things with the yeah. movies. Like it's not really, it's an ensemble, but it's not done right. Like there's no like leader. Yeah, I guess, I guess he's supposed to be. Probably, I think like Chiklis probably has like the most substantial act. I guess. Um, yeah. An issue, I it, it kind of just like at first when I started watching, I'm like, all right, like it's not like pace the worst. At least they're going into space fairly quickly, and then they get the powers. Mm-hmm. But then it kind of just putters along. It doesn't feel like there's any like urgency with them like trying to change their powers. I'm not saying like every movie needs like something like that, but like if you think of something like Back to the Future, like he has a week to go, you know, yeah. get the time machine going. But in the meantime, he's got to get back with his parents. Otherwise, he'll disappear. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, I'm sure people could think of other examples. But, like, uh-huh. you know, there, there needs, needs to be, to be like, like, a, a reason a... why we need to do this by X, Y, Y kind of thing. Uh-huh. 
I don't like changing movies. Like, I don't think that's like valid criticism. Like, oh, what if they just did this instead? Like, that's not good criticism. But they could have right. added like a ticking clock element. Like you said that too. Yeah, I think like, at least to make the story more, you know, if if the characters feel urgency, then the audience will too. And yeah. And they'll be more invested in what's going on. Yeah, like early on, maybe their powers go back and forth. Like they turn on and off. Like, okay, so maybe we can change our powers by a certain time until it's too late. And then mm -hmm. our powers are here for good forever. So it's like, okay, so we have like a thing we're working toward. And also, you know, the villain of the film, Doctor Doom, who's apparently one of the greatest villains of all time, according to like yeah. comic book nerds or whatever. Like he doesn't do shit in this movie. He, he's like going to boardroom meetings and like his arc is like, I, I want to be part of the boardroom, but they keep, they're going to fire me. <laughs> and yeah, like, that's it. <laughs> Julian McMahon from Nip Tuck. Yeah, it, that part's very tedious. Again, I know I already mentioned Spider-Man, but it kind of like reminded me of like Willem Dafoe's act in that movie. Like he's kind of getting pushed out by his company, but then like he ends up like killing. The, yeah. The, uh, the pl but yeah, it's like very overstated. Like, you know, they're all sitting in fucking giant chairs. Like we're unimpressed. With you. <laughs> they might as well be like holding like a little like cup of tea. Like, yeah. Yeah. Know. Even the fact that he has powers doesn't make sense because they show when all the, when all of them get the powers they're hit they're hit with like CGI radiation like you see the Invisible Girl or like Johnny Storm like, <laughs> it's like hilarious yeah. but you don't see Don Von Doom apparently he was in like a shielded room and then like his powers just grow out gradually as opposed to them yeah like, like he's a got like a and... cut or something and then like yeah I, and, but his I, cut turns explain... into metal. Yeah, they don't explain it very... And, like, he goes to the doctor, and the doctor's like, we need to do tests on you. And Dr. Doom's like, yeah. no. And he, like, throws him into, like, glass and kills him instantly, which is, like, very <laughs> impressive. Yeah, well, it's a kid's movie. Yeah, you can't, like, gruesomely <laughs> kill him. Yeah, exactly. It's like, he's like, we're going to send you to the CDC. We got reports to the CDC. He's like, nah. He chokes him and kills him. Yeah, it's just so dumb. It's like, what is he building toward? Like, what's his overall purpose and the like why does he want to kill the fantastic four why does he want to take over the world at the end like why is he destroying the city like it's just like not clear it's just because he's the bad guy i guess um, yeah and maybe that's something the second one does a little more better but not really here it's just like what the fuck like what what is he doing and again there's no like we're not building to anything it's just like the whole movie is like getting his powers you know he's a bad guy from the beginning obviously his name is von doom yeah, he just um, acts so very it's just so predictable. Imperious. Yeah. Yeah. Even at the beginning, he's acting that way. It's like, the, it just doesn't make any I'm, sense. I'm impressed yeah. with your work, Reed. And then, like, yeah. I, I'm with your your uh, unrequited crush. And then I guess that's kind of like motivation how him and Jessica Alba are like getting together. He doesn't like it. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was unclear, too. They had like some kind of relationship. Yeah. But. He, he she always liked Reed more because Reed was I don't stretchy. Know. He's yeah. more flexible. Yeah, was that in this movie where the girl says like there's like a news reporter? She's like, does every part of you stretch? Or like I, you know, I think it was yeah, alluding to a dick joke. It's like wow, okay, again, like this is supposed to be a kids movie, clearly because I, a, I an guess. adult cannot enjoy this. Like maybe that's a that's like kind of sh of a Shrek joke. It's like we're gonna throw one in for the adults, <laughs> like go well, the, go over the kid's head. I'm like right. all right. <laughs> The it's made for movie. like families, like you know. There's like jokes for dad there, and then there's jokes for the kids. Where like the whole kids want to see the Fantastic Four, and the dad's like, "Ah, fuck it, I don't give a shit." Like they want to go to the movies. That's probably how my dad was when he took me to this. <laughs> he's like, my, yeah. he just wants to go to the movies, watch superhero movies. Fucking dumb shit. Who cares? Um, yeah, it's just like really lame. Um, the Human Torch in this movie sucks. <laughs> he's terrible. Yeah. Chris he's really Evans annoying. Got he got more laughs yeah. than Scott Pilgrim. Just in like, he's not yeah. even in that much, but that's just a funny he's in a character. Five minutes, yeah, his character in this is so annoying. And they try to do this butting heads thing with him and the thing, where mm -hmm. he's like, "Yo, the thing, you're ugly," and then the mm -hmm. the, the thing's like, whoa, whoa, "Lucky Buddha beer," and <laughs> it's just like this isn't interesting. Like I don't even understand why there's like some kind of dynamic here. Like it wasn't set up well and. It's one of the most irritating parts of both movies, the fact that they're like at each other's throats. Like, ah, it's like, yeah, okay. It's, it's very superficial because you can do that Stupid. well. It can be sometimes it can be funny, just like continually. Yeah, but they were just heads. throwing in, yeah, it's just another yeah. character dynamic that's like doesn't fit the movie. It's just like padding time, you know? It's just like lame. 
Um, it's just fucking lame. <laughs> <laughs> really? movies, all these movies are relatively short. I think this one like clocks into like an hour thirty three or something. Yeah, that's a good thing about them. But like, it doesn't feel like <laughs> much has happened. There's like a like an extended sequence where like they're just like, you know, futzing around like human. Yeah, it's a hundred six minutes. He so... puts like the shaving cream on his face and then tickles. Oh yeah, that yeah. whole sequence was terrible. And you know, like Reed reaches for toilet paper in the other room. You see his arm stretched. It's like, oh my god, like how many fucking dumb gags can you throw into one scene? It's he, like he a walks parody. In, yeah, he walks in on Invisible Girl taking a shower. She turns invisible. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's, it's 106 minutes, by the way. But I think minutes. with, like, so credits, a... it's a little longer. I think, like, once, like, the actual, yeah. like, movie's over, it's like, but you know, which is fairly short. For, like, superhero movie, that's, like, yeah. fairly short. I think it's that's probably, probably an hour and 40 the minutes. MB. That's shorter mm-hmm. than any of the MCU movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not enough, like, because there's nothing fucking happening. It's just a bunch of dumb gags. <laughs> it's, like, not interesting. <laughs> Um, the end of the movie's hilarious when it says the end, and then they cut to like some ripoff Raiders of the Lost Ark post credit yeah. scene, and it's like you know you see the crates like it's, Victor Von Doom's in a crate c- container, and it zooms out. It's like the shot from Raiders when you see all the containers. Like, yeah, we have top men working on it, top men, and then you see like, da, da, da. yeah, yeah, it's like but the same shit. Pretty much, and um, also <laughs> all the two- influences are obvious. Yeah. Also, too, like the movie's just like very mid two thousands to me. Just like the song choices, I feel like I'm watching like fucking Big Fat Liar or something. Like Scooby Doo Monsters Unleashed. The, yeah, when Johnny Storm's like doing the snowboarding scene with Rima Nunos, it's just yeah, it's yeah, like the like, most like, early two thousand. Yeah, another lame gag. He's like, "Come join me in my hot tub here," and you yeah, because he melts. Shot him between her legs. It's like the graduate. You said. It's fucking lame. Like, oh my god, like, how many dumb jokes can you throw in here again? Um, the way they in- they handle the invisible girl is terrible. Um, Jessica Alba, you know, she looks good. Like the whole, mm-hmm. all they do with her is get her naked every chance they can get. They can try. <laughs> I'm not even like, exaggerating. Yeah, reasons, right? And, yeah. and then the and the yeah, I think that was kind of like caused some strife apparently because it was like it was like i feel like so much of the focus is like trying to like make her look pretty which is pretty anyway but it's just funny like they focus so much on like it was like her like stripping because she's invisible like oh you gotta take yeah your it's just like it's yeah. a little much <laughs> yeah exactly again this is like a family movie like how many times are you gonna get her freaking naked in this it's like five scenes i think like her like taking her clothes off or something the the first scene with her when she comes in with the the suit on you know she, like it's very like yeah reads like looking at her breasts basically and then yeah that, that okay, scene on yeah, the bridge right. I Don't did like ask. the scene on the bridge, but there's like this whole like little part where she has to like, Sue, you have to cross the police um, barricade. barricade, so you gotta take off all your clothes. Right. <laughs> it's like what the fuck, like, and then you know she gets through, and then Reed and and the Human Torch are like they got across the barricade somehow. It's like what. Like, how did they get across the barricade? They didn't turn invisible. What fucking sense does that make? Why does she even? Why did she even need to do that? And she's Doesn't like, I can't believe you made me did that. And Johnny Storm's like, I need therapy. It's all right. They're not even really brother and sister. They don't look like it to me. <laughs> no, no. You, you, you could tell, yeah. I mean, uh, Jessica Alba's like part Hispanic, I think, and, and white. Yeah. And then Chris Evans is Irish. Yeah, like Irish Italian. Yeah, so they either way, some, they're, yeah. they're unconvincing as siblings. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Yeah, it's just it's just weird. It's just weird how much of that is in this movie. And that's definitely something that's like an early 2000s thing. Like, if they made it a, a Fantastic Four movie today, that would not fly. Right. <laughs> at all. <No. laughs> and, and again, yeah, like coming off of the, you know, at the time, it was coming off of the yells like Batman Begins and... Incredibles was not long before, yeah. which like handles the formula better in a way. Like about it has a strong, strong women characters like Violet and you know Mrs. Incredible are great characters. Yeah. Or Rachel in Batman Begins is a good character, mm-hmm. right? They're not like yeah, they're not they're not handled like again. She's supposed to be a superhero and she's just like demeans like the whole movie and yeah, yeah, it, it takes some of the impact away and yeah, those movies I mean, she's like she's not I've, good in the movie either. Just not particularly album. and like yeah those other yeah. movies i don't feel dated in the same way they don't have like the you know 
sound, same soundtrack or like you know as many they have some jokes but they're not as corny and they don't like d- detract from the story yeah exactly um i don't know i'm not sure what else there is to say about it there was funny a funny scene when um it's like toward the beginning it's when the thing becomes the thing with the rock monster or whatever and he crashes through the hospital room and there's like a giant hole in the hospital room and all the guys come in and like, oh my God, what happened to Victor? And and then, um, uh, what happened to, I, I'm confused until I'm thinking uh, of Vic ben. Mackey. What ben, happened ben. to Ben? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of Vic Mackey. They're like, what happened to Ben? And then Victor Von Doom walks in. He's like, what's going on here? Just very casually. He's like, oh, yeah, what's up? Like, strolls in. It's a fucking giant hole in the wall. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> it's a dirty free for all. <laughs> <laughs> whatever um so that's yeah there's that funny was, parts in it there's a lot of dumb shit um i ultimately feel it's like pretty harmless i mean even like the jessica alba stuff isn't that bad it's just like man this movie's like a mess it's just a fucking it mess it, it probably doesn't capture what those comics were at all i wouldn't and, think so yeah I, I don't know i i wasn't a huge fan of it i you know, it is hard to make an ensemble movie. That's why I think Avengers is so commendable. They they handled all those characters. They had more ha- more characters than this, and it was handled much better than, than this film was. Um, they couldn't even do four characters here. And most um, of them had their own movies before. I think that makes a difference. And they're, yeah, they're, sure. Yeah, they're more well-drawn as mm-hmm. opposed to just like, Johnny is the the, the class clown. and you know, Yeah, ben they're, is they're all blah, cartoon blah. characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very superficial, and also I think Doctor Doom kind of looks silly. He reminds me of like if people have seen Spaceballs. He reminds me of, like Pizza the Hut's like robot friend. <laughs> He's like the same face, like just, you know. I'm sure in the yeah. comics he looks cool. I just didn't think the costume here was particularly menacing. Yeah. He looks so better than he does in Fan Four Stick. Yeah, we can get. To, I, I think we've. Uh, I think we've covered the first movie. Do we should we yeah. rate it? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna, like I said, when um it was over, I'm like, you just saw the best one. <laughs> right. That was we the best one em. you just saw. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I would rate it, I would rate it a, like a three or a four. I'm like a little more lenient on it. Probably a three. That's I mean, probably what I would <laughs> give it. I yeah, you know. It's like kind of it's like close to a four. I just feel like it's it's like one of those like Jurassic World Dominion kind of things where like I have watched this movie quite a few times like in my life, so I clearly you, don't despise it. You watched Dominion um, multiple times? No, I mean I've watched Fantastic Four multiple times since what I was that a to kid. Do with, what does that have to do with Jurassic World Dominion? They're they're both like guilty pleasures to me. Uh. I I don't even, yeah well not. I I don't like that term guilty pleasure, but they're just like they're so silly that I would watch them again. Amusing, yeah, yeah, they're amusing, right? (laughs) Yeah, so like somewhere around there. I don't know. The ratings don't matter really. Um, No, we don't. We don't particularly care for it. How about that? No, I don't care for it. I don't recommend it. As a kid, I kind of liked it, but that Mm -hmm. also as a kid, you know, there wasn't as many options available for hero films now there's m- many more and they're much well there better. was like spider-man and x-men those were kind of like the big one at the time and then yeah obviously batman begins that this came out and then that series moving on to fantastic four rise of the silver surfer the first 30 minutes is fucking shenanigans a lot of <laughs> shenanigans they show like clips no of story e-news like, what is this? Like, mm-hmm. who the fuck cares? Like, do, like, kids care about e news? Like, oh, my God. You should hear what <laughs> happened with uh, Sue Storm. Like, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> Part of the fun of, like, the first one, anyway, was seeing them become the hero or whatever. Yeah. And, like, even the science part. Because they are supposed to be scientists, I guess. That's, like, part of the story of, like, the Fantastic Four. The big science guys. And, mm-hmm. and, and this one, it's just, like, a superhero movie. Like, they, they just, like, scrap all that science stuff. It's, like... Okay, not that that stuff was particularly compelling, but it was there, which is not something in this movie. This movie's much shorter. Um, uh, not much. I think it like come. It's probably like ten minutes shorter, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It feels more fluffy. It like, definitely not does. As much stuff. It's it's like more. This one's PG, right? It is. Yeah. It was like the first, according to IMDb, it was the first PG rated Marvel movie since Howard the Duck, which is a dubious <laughs> comparison. 
<laughs> Howard the Duck is terrible. This is better than that, but we it's cover like that not by much. I mean, we can cover that another time. Yeah, it's just like it's just like all the same shit from the first one. Yeah, you know, it's got it's the product the placement. Same. Yeah, Johnny Storm's in a fucking stupid, uh, uh, quite, like sports thing. This has like, a bunch of dodge, product placement on it. Whatever. It's, yeah. At one point, they sh- they show like. They're watching like news coverage because like the Silver Surfer comes to Earth, whatever. They're in a Circuit City, which I think closed like not long after the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't exist anymore. People like kids. Dodge not. made their fantastic car. Right. Yeah. That was like. Yeah, and they yeah. ask if it has a Hemi, which is like the engine Dodges have. Yeah, they're just like fucking it's like, shills. What the fuck? <laughs> now, th- yeah, there was some product. Pl- that, that just, uh, no, obviously, this isn't the only movie to use product placement. At least it was like funnier in Iron Man. When he's just like, I need a cheeseburger. And he's just like eating Burger King at the news conference. <laughs> <laughs> There's not as much of that in those movies, at least. No, it's like yeah, every year, once in a while. But there's like, there's just like blatant, like, like yeah. Johnny Storm walk again with all the fucking things on his, like you know suit like all the logos on his suit i guess they're trying to kind of poke fun at it but you know this ain't deadpool either it's like it's not funny no no it's when not trying like to poke fun at the product cheeky. placement yeah yeah exactly it's just there's and there's so much of it too mm-hmm. and like why do they need a fantastic car if the human torch can fly it's just like a million things um he doesn't even need a seat warmer yeah for some reason the government uh, even though they locked Doctor Doom in a crate the last movie and said he's evil, he tried to kill everyone. This movie, he's like working with the government again. They're like, no, we should trust this guy. Yeah, <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense. It'd be like if in like it Die Hard two, it turns out Hans Gruber had survived a fall from the building. It's like, let's <laughs> trust him. He's gonna help us. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, make any like, sense. yeah, we could trust this guy. This guy named Victor Von Doom. I mean, why not? It's like, it's I like, trust oh him God. more than I trust my own wife. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, it's very... And, like, mostly, like, a lot of the first acts is focusing on the wedding. Like, wow. Like, riveting stuff. Like, by comparison, maybe yeah. this is unfair, but the following year was The Dark Knight, which opens with, you know, incredible <laughs> Bay Kais sequence that introduces our main villain, the Joker. Again, most movies aren't as good as The Dark Knight, but it, it's just, like... You're not it's even crazy gonna try. That was one year right. after this, it's, yeah. it's not even this close. Is like, this feels like an early 2000s. Like it doesn't even feel like 2007. It feels like 2001 or like two, like before, <laughs> like like before X Men or like some kind of. I guess except for like the visual effects or whatever, like but mm-hmm. which also don't look great. But yeah, the whole um, I guess the the thing about this movie is there was like more of a clear cut, like. The, the antagonist actually, which is Galactus in this movie, uh, they, they like it actually, w- the movie was building to something. It's like, okay, Galactus is going to destroy the planet. Silver Surfer's here to kind of send the message to humanity or whatever. And the Fantastic Four have to stop it. It's like, okay, very clear goal. Like, right off the bat. Like, okay, I know what the goal is of this movie. They need to stop Galactus from eating the planet. And there's stakes to it. Um, you don't feel the stakes at all because the movie's very poorly made. <laughs> right. Um, but there was like something happening there where as opposed to the first one, I was, I just kept thinking like, why is like Victor Von Doom like doing anything? Like what is his character even? Yeah. But he, and then he, you're, you're right. I get, yeah. The Silver Surfer's voice by Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus. Mm-hmm. And, um, but then, <laughs> Morpheus! Yeah. But then the uh, Doctor Doom just becomes the villain again, which I found like very like uninspired. Like it just yeah, it's so boring. This movie has the it has the too many villains villains problem. It's just three villains: is Galactus and Silver Surfer. But Galactus doesn't really have much of a presence though. He's just kind of like this yeah. vague, vague force. He's a freaking cloud, which is a terrible Ooh. idea. It reminded me of Green Lantern, which came out not soon after. The villain of that was right. a giant another cloud. bad <laughs> superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah. What is it with bad superhero movies and making the villain a fucking cloud? It's probably because it's not that a space scary. cloud. It's like James and the Giant yeah. Peach. The villain is a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? What's with the freaking cloud? Like, uh, I would have liked Galactus to be the big guy in the purple suit, like he is in the comic books or whatever. Like, a, <laughs> like that uh, Grimace from like the McDonald's guy. He's a, he's in a purple. Yeah. Suit. <laughs> you can make that look cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would take effort and um. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was... Yeah, well, it's just not... They don't put effort into this shit. This is more of a side note, but um, 
you know, when this like shit stack's going down with Galactus and the Silver Surfer, a news reporter describes it as a climatic turn of events. I'm like, really? Are you climactic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, do we have to, we had to rewind that? Like, climatic. Yeah. Right. What the fuck? Like, they don't they don't give a shit. No, and, they don't give a shit in this movie at all. And also, this applies to both movies probably. I noticed when you know, like the show, maybe I'm thinking of the first movie, but when the show on the Fantastic Four on the news, like, wow, the team, blah, blah, blah. Like the Chirons, they look very fake. It just looks like Microsoft, like PowerPoint. <laughs> like it just added like yeah. titles at the bottom. Yeah. You know, because when you the watch like an actual bottom, news, yeah. it's like official, like board looking border. But yeah, this is just like white yeah, text. It's like some graphic element. Yeah. Right. And that's like, they don't do that at all in this. It's just so fucking dumb. Like, oh my God. Um, the, the, for some reason, the human torch chasing silver surfer made him gave him the ability to when he touches people they they take his power away so like when he touches michael chiklis michael chiklis turns normal but he has fire powers and and johnny storm hilariously turns into a rock monster oh my it's like god. oh my god this is fucking stupid yeah. And, you know, it's just another excuse to get a Jessica Alba naked in this movie <laughs> where right. he touches her and all the clothes burn off. And then she's like naked in the street. I'm like, Jesus Christ, with this fucking shit. Like, how many times are we going to do this gag of getting Jessica Alba with no clothes on? Like, right. my God. And it just feels like filler. Like, you mentioned, like, yeah, that whole, like, plot thread that keeps swapping powers. Like, it's trying to be like, well, like, Shrek 2. Like, oh, they, you know, they take a potion. Now Shrek's human and Donkey's yeah. a hot. Yeah, it's like, so. it's just like... What can we do? It's the second one. What can we do that's different? It's like shit out of a cartoon. Yeah. It just doesn't even make any sense. And then at the end, they all touch at once, and he gets all their powers. It's like, what the fuck sense does that make? No tag backs. Yeah. <laughs> and then they all touch him again, and it's like, oh my fucking god. This is like, it's so stupid. It's like even more stupid than the first one was. Like, in so many ways. Um, it's, who who has a death scene at the end of this, or like an almost death scene? Like, oh my god! He, yeah, that's right. They, she gets like stabbed or whatever, and that's what made Silver Surfer turn on Galactus. Because like this is this fucking stupid backstory where Galactus had a wife or something, and then yeah, like, it's very lame. Jessica Alba reminds him of his wife. It's like oh my god, this fucking it's, shit. She's it's like, so, shit. like a silver version of just yeah, it's like <laughs> man, like 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 the, it looks like the T1000 like when he's just in the like liquid metal form. It's like a similar design. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh my god. Yeah, Jessica Alba, they put a bunch of makeup on her in this movie. I'm like, why? She looks, you know, she just looks good without all that makeup. It's yeah. like it's a very noticeable. Yeah, amount. right. Like, Obviously, like, actors get makeup anyway, highlighter. but yeah, it's like very yeah prominent. Yeah, right. it's like really noticeable. It's like especially watching them back to back. Like in the first one, she doesn't look as like dolled up or whatever as in this movie. Right. Um. Yeah, and then like Doctor Doom wants Silver Surfer's surfboard because it gives him power. It's like the movie completely like lost me at a certain point. Yeah, this is like <laughs> so much shit going on and. Yeah, like, like we just, like, mentioned, like, a bunch of different plot threads. So it is funny. Th there's, like, the, you know, like, how they switch powers. Like, it'd be like if I tagged you, and then you have a Boston accent, and I have a Long Island accent. We could just swap. Yeah. Could try it like yeah. that. But, I, yeah, I, I again, like, like Queens, it's, it's Queens, because. Like, yeah. <laughs> Out of the Queens slang, or you had a clean slang, a, cl a queen slang, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, something like that. I don't know. The movie was fucking stupid. Um yeah. It's it's just like so much more, like kid friendly, than it's not even like a fight or anything. There's not a lot of action. It's a lot of kind of no. blah blah blah. Like oh, this is my my special day, my wedding, and then yeah, it was out. like a brief action scene or like Johnny Storm chasing Silver Surfer. Then like the scene where the Ferris wheel f was falling down in London. Uh, and another thing too, because you mentioned there was the scene earlier where yeah, like. The human torch is chasing the silver surfer. He's like, man, that's cool. And then he he's just kind of like <laughs> chasing him. Like, how fast are they go? Like, all of because it, it's in New York, right? And then all of a sudden they're going through DC. Like, how fucking fast are they flying? You probably can't even see what the hell is going on. And then yeah. well, at the end of the movie, they go from a forest in like Yugoslavia or something, Slovakia, <laughs> to fucking the Great Wall of China to to Shanghai. Whoa! Like, 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 like so quickly. Like, what are they fucking teleporting? Like, how fast are they going? Yeah, and then it takes like five hours to get from like all these places. 
Yeah, it's just like cartoon logic. It doesn't make any sense. And then yeah. like Chris, uh, sorry, the, you know, like the Human Torch, he ends up, he just like falls in the desert. And he's like back in New York, like a fucking like hour and a half. Later. Like, <laughs> yeah. How did that work? Did he just like teleport? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like people thought that was bad. The Dark Knight Rises when fucking Bruce Wayne got from the yeah. desert to to Gotham. It's like in this movie, it's like literally the next scene. Like he's just back. <laughs> right, it's, it's like, not even like fuck? a day has passed. Or anything. Yeah. Yeah, the editing in this movie, and the last one, too, is terrible. We just kept noticing how, like, people would pop into the scene. Like, in the first movie, there's a scene yeah, where, like, yeah. like, the scene Jessica Alba was introduced, she's just, like, shows up in the scene. You're It'd be like, like somebody's just, oh, like, behind she come me from? right now. <laughs> like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> just pops up. Like, everyone just pops in. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have much else to say aside from... what. Like, we can just go on the Josh Trank one. Like, I don't have much else to say about this shit, honestly. It's like... I'd give it the same as the as the first one. I'd give it a three or a four. It's like probably more like a three personally, but yeah, I just have more fond memories of the first I, one. I initially had it as like a two, yeah. but like it's not that much worse than the first one to be honest. It's not as bad yeah. as like Morbius. Prob- Morbius is probably like more boring. Something like I'd that. I'd give them both a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morbius true. is worse than these. Yeah, yeah. Morbius because these like, have some like camp value. Right. Yeah, they're at least like not as like dreary, which we'll get to in uh-huh. the dreary one next. <laughs> yeah, the camp value of Morbius is like not the movie itself. It's like the fan community making up scenes and like, you know, CGI and editing him saying it's more of a time into the movie. Which isn't even like, a real that, line. <laughs> no, it's not in the film at all. Like that's, that's the funny part though. And maybe like even the only funny part of Morbius is like Matt Smith dancing with the follow follow fa. But, like, yeah, this movie's got, like, both of them have, like, parts where I'm like, man, that's really stupid. Yeah, like, it's the very silly. And, again, like, more of this, yeah. like, the dumb jokes. Yeah. It's a really dumb. Really dumb movie. Oh, uh, Both what, of them are dumb. Sorry, one more yeah. thing we should mention before um, that we didn't. I didn't real Both uh, the, the first mo- two movies are co-written by Mark Frost, who co-created Twin Peaks, which I, yeah. I was very surprised. And I wouldn't have guessed that had I not known it. <laughs> He did not give a shit about this. He's just like, <laughs> whatever. You know, it's for kids. It'd be funny if, uh, like, Invisible Girl, uh, Woman was, like, the log lady. She was just carrying a log, right? Like, just, like, little, like, like kitchen <laughs> yeah. things like that. Like, you know, very silly. Like, you know, the human, to- whatever. Like, Mr. Fantastic's drinking coffee. And the other guy's like, there was a fish in the percolator. <laughs> Yeah, Stuff like that. This like, is, what this weird is his. Uh, that has like better gags. It's a show about like a woman who's been murdered. Yeah, this is his Dune. Right. Yeah. Like this, like a <laughs> studio gig. Yeah, he just didn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you would not, you would not believe it all. It's the guy who created Twin Peaks. Like, or yeah, it's just whatever. He didn't care. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, so a, a few years went by, mm-hmm. Fox decided to reboot it again. Yeah. This time with a more dark and edgy take, kind of like the Dark Knight, realistic, <laughs> in quotes, grounded in quotes, like not really, but, um, and it's directed by Josh Trank. Um, he's, he's kind of become like, well, the behind the scenes of this movie, I guess is like infamous, a lot of like production trouble, him battling with the studio, they changed his cut. He was, you know, he seemed really stressed out from it. I think he was supposed to do a Star Wars film, but he backed away because he he was just so stressed from, like, doing studio stuff. He's like, he had no interest in it. Yeah, I I think that was, like, at least a rumor or something. And, yeah, like, there's a ton of shit that got cut out of the movie. There is a scene, I think, where they build the fantastic car, like, which is not in the movie. They cut that out completely. And, you know, it was supposed to have, like, this kind of... um, at least what I got from watching it and, and like some of the bl- deleted scene stuff is kind of have, have like this uh, like Goonies feel or even like Back to the Future. Like all these kids get together, they like build things and like they're, it's about their camaraderie and, you know, their yeah. friendship and like something like that. But, you know, in, in the studio system, it got completely fucking mangled to where there's like none of that left. So like maybe mm-hmm. 1% of that I see in there. Um, this movie is is just terrible. Like, yeah, I was God again like awful. I was telling you like you watched Silver Surfer in the first one. I'm like that is not even the worst of it yet, dude. Like you're gonna see something now that is like total fucking shit, like completely yeah. dull, irredeemable, bland, joyless, a messy like it's a fucking mess. Like you can tell yeah. there's like all kinds of studio interference and like you know they, it's partly like they didn't like what he was doing, you know, but it's also some studio like. 
they're also stupid. Like, they don't know what they're doing either. Like, it's probably better to just leave the movie how it was than make this fucking jumbled mess, which is how it feels. It's, like, very obvious there's reshoots in it. Like, Kate Mara's wig, which is, like, an infamous talking point of the movie. The dumb gags that are thrown in. The gag, or the, it's not a gag, it's the part with Tim Blake Nelson, who's completely wasted in this movie. He's looking at a, a, a paper, and he's like, oh, it's Victor Von Doom. And it's, like, dubbed in. It's clearly, like, they added that later. I don't think his name was even Von Doom in the Josh Trank original version of it. Um, release the Trank cut. I want to see it. Nah. <laughs> if we're gonna, nah. if we're getting Zack Snyder's tra- uh, Zack Snyder's cut. <laughs> not, not. Oh, what interested. you don't want to see that? No. We, we didn't even <laughs> like the Snyder cut. To be, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, I didn't. I hated it. Uh, to yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't want to see a cut of this either. To be fair, yeah, that's a better I, movie. I, than one cut this. of it was enough. <laughs> I maybe. Probably. <laughs> at, least the, at least this isn't fucking three hours long. But that's the thing it too. Is like, like it's it. so short. You don't get any character out of any of these people. Like you need no. you need more time to develop four characters and like make you care about them, but they don't. They just like it's all be like plot points just like rushed through. Um, it, this movie is just terrible. It's just the the stuff with them with kids at the beginning. I fucking hated that. Their teacher so is uh, Dan Castellaneta who plays Homer. <laughs> you know, does mm. many voices on The Simpsons. This is kind of random. Like, it is like he, these movies keep bringing in actors from classic shows like Michael B. Jordan and Reggie, the late Reggie Cathy from The Wire. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody's wasted. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to repeat my points I made in my video many years ago, but I hated the movie then and I still hate it now. It's like, the it's just like there's nothing happening in that beginning. The beginning is terrible. And then it cuts to Miles Teller and Jamie Bell that look like 30 year old guys and they're in a high school science fair and they're next to a kid. Like an it's actual. Like 12. It, it's funny because he doesn't even look like. Yeah. The other kid doesn't even look like a high school student. It's like the two extreme. Like one's too young, the other guys are too old. <laughs> and what's funny, like, you know, yeah. the, the flashback at the beginning of the movie, it shows them as fifth graders in 2007, where you and I were fifth graders in 2007. I don't think we're the yeah. same age as Miles Teller and Jamie Bell. They're fucking 10 no. years older than us. <laughs> no. They look, they look so out of place. Like it's just, like so obvious. It's two thirty year old guys, like in a in a high school science fair. <laughs> it's so like, what the fuck is this? This yeah, is already it's getting like bad. <laughs> yeah, like just the way the movie started was terrible, and then it got even worse. And that's what I mean. Like the the first half hour, you think is bad, but then it gets worse. Like as it goes along, like the film gets progressively worse and worse and worse. They the the dude from the wire and and House of Cards shows up, um, and he's like. He, he, for some reason, he's at a high school science fair, even though he's a billion-dollar uh, science company <laughs> owner, like, CEO, whatever. It's like, what the fuck? Kate like, Mara. You know, yeah, yeah, the daughter. Kate Mara shows up. And, yeah. Like, why would they be at a high school science fair, like a public school? It doesn't make any sense. And they try to do this this budding romance between the, the Kate Mara and Miles Teller. And it's like, they have no chemistry at all. They, they're no. terrible together. Their dialogue is terrible. Like, oh, what are you listening to, music? And, and she's like, yeah, I like music. The music is because there's different rhythms and beats that, that go in sync, and the, the human brain recognizes <laughs> patterns. It's like, you could just say you like music. You don't have to, like, go into this whole explanation about, like, yeah, the human brain recognizes patterns, and we like patterns. Like, what the fuck? She's like, are these, like, human beings? Like, really? Like, how can you identify with these people? It's just terrible dialogue. And then this, like, dumb gag dialogue, like, oh, Victor Von Doom over here. <laughs> it's right, like Debbie Dr. Downer. Doom over here. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he called, like, uh, uh, Dr. Doom in this movie is terrible too, but he, he calls her Susan and Miles Teller's like, oh, do you prefer Susan to Sue? She's like, no. I'm like, oh, was that a joke? Or was this like, it's just like a little bit of like, um, you know, banter that Josh Trank had to throw in there. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Right, see, this is, this is so lame. Miles Teller should have stuck with Drummond instead of stretching <laughs> like in Whiplash. Yeah. Yeah, really. J.K. Simmons should have been in it. Right. We, we could just fill the, the video, just like mention like better movies that these guys have been in. Because obviously like, later <laughs> that year, Michael B. Jordan was in Creed, which is excellent and like a hundred times <laughs> yeah. the movie this is. <laughs> yeah. Did Michael B. Jordan in this movie is terrible. Like right. the only reason I think he agreed to it was because you know his first movie was Chronicle with Josh Trank. I think that is oh th- that might be one of his, well it's definitely one of his earliest film roles. Uh, Michael B. Jordan. Me, yeah, I'm not, I, I knew him from The Wire yeah. already. But yeah, The was, Wire, was, which is a show. Was a I was just thinking about yeah. film roles. Right. That might be like his, if not his first film role, one of his first film roles is Chronicle, which Josh Trank did, and that's a decent movie. 
Like, that's a good superhero movie. I see why they picked him for this, but, like, it, it just doesn't... Like, his character in this movie is terrible. Yeah. Like, at least in the... in the, At least in the, uh, the the Chris Evans Human Torch, you understood that, like, okay, he's kind of like a hothead, bad playboy. Bad boy, yeah. Bad, yeah, yeah, like that. Like, he drives motorcycles and cool cars. And here, he, like, I guess he drives cool cars in this movie, but that, that, he's just, like, a drag racer. And, like, that's it. Like, you don't get anything more out of his character aside from that. It's like, what is his character? Like, what's anyone's character? What is their chemistry? They have no chemistry with each other. They, they're all, they all seem like they just met, like, on set that day. And they're, like, pretending to be friends. It's so fucking weird. And it doesn't work. Yeah. And most of the movie you just spend in the lab. Like, you don't see the four of them wind up, like, at, you know fully formed until like i think the hour 20 mark and this fucking like hour yeah, and 30 the very end movie. of the movie <laughs> yeah the very end of it literally yeah and it's like you have to wait so long to get to the superhero stuff it's like the opposite problem of rise of silver surfer where there was no science at all it was all like you know them acting like superheroes but there was some science because he was in the lab but it's like very like rudimentary like i think it was in the first one it's like turn back human whatever it said it was like just like the most <laughs> yeah. like, basic diagram yeah like for yeah the audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> become less like, super like here guys yeah it's like a machine and then an arrow and it's like okay human and then superhero or whatever <laughs> yeah it's like uh, uh, but in this movie it's like all exposition at the beginning they they kind of try to stick with the science stuff, but it's all jargon. It doesn't mean anything. And then they're also trying to throw in this banter that's terrible. And you don't get anything out of these characters. It's just like filler because like the movie's wasting time mm -hmm. like with, with dialogue and these, these scenes, but you're not actually learning anything about these people. You don't actually like know any of them by the end of the movie like wow he's just a bunch of fucking hollow shells of characters it's like so one dimensional stilted. and at one point like it's implied that or not implied but like they show that um dr doom i guess is feels resentful and jealous because like reed and sue are hitting it off i guess this could what they have like a pleasant conversation for fucking two minutes yeah he's, he's like all bent yeah out of shape. exactly <laughs> it's so forced yeah, yeah like, they, they I have hate you. <laughs> the actors seem like they just like resented the movie, like just from watching their performances. They just did not seem into the movie well, at I, all. I, yeah, Kate Meyer has said like she felt it was a toxic work environment. I, I mean, she's glad she did it because her and Jamie Bell are married now. It's kind of like with like uh, you know Daredevil. I know that they're not together anymore, but Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. Yeah, like, sometimes like sure. a lot of bad movies. Like you know, maybe they can yeah. bond over the experience. Daredevil's better than this. <laughs> it I'll is. I would rather watch it. Daredevil. Yeah. I'd rather watch Daredevil and the first two Fantastic Fours over this movie. Just yeah, it's so this is dull. one of the worst superhero movies. That, this is like up there with like, you know, or like down there, whatever, with like the first, like the 2016 Suicide Squad, like stuff like that. Like, yeah, Justice, the, the original Justice League, like Batman v. It's probably worse than Batman v. Superman. It might it, be. It's, it's about the same. It's like maybe <laughs> slightly worse. The, the same in grace of it's that short. That's like the only thing yeah, to say about shorter, it. Yeah, it is shorter, but it's like... Probably... And that's because the studio's like, fucking wrap this up. This movie's terrible. Um, the reviews for it are abysmal. Like, no one likes this movie. Fans of the Fantastic Four don't like it. Critics don't like it. Audiences don't like it. It's not funny. It's not fun. It has no camp value. Like, at least the actors in the first one, they're hamming it up. But mm -hmm. at least you understand, like, what's going on. And, like, it seems like they could be having fun with it, but it's just, this movie's just, like, they look miserable to be there. They look like they know the movie's gonna suck. It's <laughs> like, miserable never, to watch. It's, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that, like, in a movie, where it's, like, very rare to see that. Right. It's crazy. Because I have heard sometimes, like, you know, movies that, like, a shit show behind the scenes turn out great, and then, like, other times, if, like, you know, harmonious sets lead to, like, you know, mediocre movies. In this case, it was, like both extremes like nobody like making it nobody like watching it no yeah it's just like josh trank even he wrote a famous letterbox review where he's like he gave it a two out of five he's like <laughs> did i use the actors well maybe it's like no dude the movie fucking it's like a half star it's like pretty it's much so bad dr and, you know mm. Dr. Doom looks like a about... crash test dummy. He's just like, <laughs> that's, you're not the first person to say that. Yeah, he looks like a crash test dummy. That's not even an exaggeration. He looks so bad in this movie. I don't know what they were thinking there. Like, he, I think Dr. Doom is supposed to be like this dictator type guy who like runs this country. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's Latveria, something like that. Or whatever it's called. Right. Yeah. I'm surprised we even know that. Because I mentioned it several <laughs> times. Like it's a, it must be from the comics. Yeah. yeah, it's like in the comics, but here it's like some dude who's like on some planet and then like they left him there and, and he they, they like if anything, I felt bad for him because they're, they're the ones who, like, build a teleporter with them again and go back to him. He's just like, leave me the fuck alone, all right? I want to stay here. Mm-hmm. And they, like, bring him onto Earth. It's like, all right, I feel bad for this dude. They're the one fucking with him. Like, they, yeah. they sent him out there and killed him. And then he's like, he's just trying to do his own thing on his own planet. Like, they should have just left him alone. But then, like, they try to make him intimidating. He blows up people's heads. And it's like, okay, again, it's like, isn't this a family movie or something? And... You know, not like you can't do something like that. I mean, the Dark Knight's pretty brutal. Like, but but it, it's uh, it's just like it's not earned. No, at and at the same film. time, it's just it's very lame. Like, it's not like mm-hmm. you know, in superhero movies, it's great to have like a villain to root against who's really diabolical. Like, you know, like The Incredibles, it ends like literally like Syndrome. He's gonna kidnap their son. Like, obviously, you want to yeah. see him like get defeated. You know, stuff like that. I mean, like, I mean, were they trying motivated. to make him sympathetic? Maybe. I, I don't. I don't even know what they were trying to do with his character. He it just doesn't sucked. work at all. It doesn't work at all. And like, all we're talking about here is like the stuff of them in the lab and the stuff of them in school because they don't actually become heroes until like past the hour mark. It feels like, and it's just fucking lame when they do. It's like focusing on this Cronenberg body horror type thing when they're all. Like, um, like, like stretching stress. out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sit, Reed, help me. <laughs> like, the thing's like a fucking pile of... Rock. Help me, Reed. Yeah. It's so it's unpleasant. Like, oh my God, like, what the why fuck? is this fun to watch? Yeah, like, why is this even <laughs> interesting? Not just, like, fun to watch. Like, who gives a shit? Like, it's like really? Robocop when the guy gets covered in toxic waste. Like, help me. <laughs> 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 That's, like, the, the main character's life. Reed's character is terrible in this movie like he he gets everyone possessed with powers or whatever like he's, he's the drunk. one who's like yeah it's like he gets drunk and he's like let's let's be the first ones on the planet and go to the teleporter because i want to be like neil armstrong or whatever it's yeah. like oh my fucking god who gives a shit and then they get they all get fucking powers they all get like you know they could have died but i guess they just become maybe maybe they sh- but yeah like it's also yeah. like they try to like explain. It doesn't really matter because like in the other movies, like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like review. like the you know the big yeah. cloud, and then like oh yeah, the thing right. you know so Ben boring. Grimm's getting covered with rocks and Johnny yeah. catches on fire. Like does it fucking? But really for the matter? other two, it doesn't make sense. It's like why does Reed stretch? Why does the invisible girl turn invisible? Like what fucking sense does that make? That's why there's no point yeah. even explaining it. It's like who cares? It's like, right. It's it's just like it's a comic book logic. You don't have yeah. to get into it too much. Yeah, they try to ground it, make it realistic, but you can't go both. You can't make a movie like The Dark Knight. Yeah, Yeah. you can't make a movie like The Dark Knight when you have a rock monster walking around. You could, I guess, like maybe something like Logan, because obviously people in real life don't have spikes that come out of their hands, but it's like grounded enough. It doesn't, you know, it's like kind of like a western. It's yeah, it doesn't like the uh, like the more sci-fi, like more like out there elements don't detract from like the drama. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a good yeah you that's know, like one of the best superhero movies i think obviously this can't compare yeah. but like it, it has okay. a better it, find, it finds a better balance between those elements yeah this movie doesn't find that balance at all mm-hmm. yeah it, you, like you can't have a dude stretching his arms around and a rock monster and all this stupid shit going on it's like it's not realistic at all like none of this makes any sense like if you try to break down the logic of this whole movie none of it makes any sense the, the way the characters make decisions don't, don't make any sense and yeah it's just like and then Reed, after getting drunk and getting his friends almost killed, like wakes up and abandons all of them and yeah. leaves the facility. You know, his friends begging for his help, who, who by the way, didn't even want to go. Reed asks him to go. He's he like, calls him in the middle of the night. For some reason. It's, it comes yeah. out of nowhere. He just like yeah. he's not even a scientist or anything. What, yeah, why yeah, would right. they just let him in? It doesn't make any sense. Like, this is my friend. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't this a top secret fucking project? Like, like it's a fucking dorm project? room. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. like a, yeah, yeah, I'm signing my friend in. <laughs> our, our dorms had more security than this fucking place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like, yeah, I'm going to let this guy in. So, yeah, exactly. And then, so, so Reed just abandons all his friends. And then, yeah, it, and then Doctor Doom breaks free, and it becomes like a generic superhero movie. They they go on the planet; it doesn't even make any beam. sense. Yeah, yeah, they go into a beam or something like it's Thor, yeah. going through the Bifrost or something, and then they land on the planet. They they fight him, and then they teleport back to Earth. And it's just like, wow, this whole movie was set in like like two locations, 
<laughs> it's like a lab and a high school and then Ben's Grimm, Ben Grimm's junkyard for like right. a minute. His brother's Chet Hanks, which is just so random. And also, uh, <laughs> yeah, who, some one of the I can't remember which character. Maybe it was Reed's dad is played by Tim Heidecker. Which is, it's, yeah. it, this is only seen unless that's just a joke that it's him, but I don't think it was. That's what makes it feel like a lot of this movie's on the cutting room floor. It's right, he like might have had more scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like yeah, again, like was that supposed to be funny? It it's not even clear. Like it doesn't make sense. And yeah, you got like all these actors in here, but they don't do anything. They're in like really small bit parts, and yeah, none of it builds to anything. Like okay. uh Ben Grimm's brother's abusive. Like, so what? That you never see him again. They can just keep, like, slapping yeah. each other. Like, it's like the Blues yeah. Brothers keep, keep getting hit with yeah. the rule. <laughs> that um, child acting, dude, was, like, not not great. <laughs> nobody's good beginning. at this. Like, Miles Teller no, is not even bad when they're adults. This. And I like him in other things. Like, again, like Whiplash yeah. and the new Top Gun. But, yeah, like, they give him, like, nothing. To, he wears glasses. That's his personality. Right. <laughs> right. Everyone's bad in this. Yeah. He wears glasses. <laughs> right. He's just like the nerdy guy. The, oh, my right. God. Uh, and, um, the, yeah, the this end is of the movie. like so dour. And yeah. there's like no reason to keep. Obviously, we're like, we watched it to cover it for the, the video, but there's like no reason to keep watching. It, it is, is not right. engaging or there's no hook to it. It just like, like, yeah. slides along. It's like, leaves like a fucking slime behind it, like a snail. Just like, ugh. yeah. <laughs> the only appeal is, you know, fan four stick brand recognition. Yeah, so this was make a, a fan four stick movie. This is a big bomb. They're trying to compete with Marvel, start something. Or like, yeah, like were, the yeah. MCU is specific because it's technically Marvel, but yeah, it's, it's not. It was outside of the unit. You know, and then, like, you know, Michael B. Jordan ended up being Black Panther. That was a much better role for him. And yeah. And also, too, because this was 2015, this came out. Um, the previous one was 2000. So a lot of, you know, movies that come out in between like you know again like the dark knight the mcu is in full swing and some more of the x-men movies like yeah this, this kind of like didn't didn't make an, an impact at all really yeah it's funny both human torch actors went on to do mcu roles right. that were much better <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is like the, the yeah the uh the audition <laughs> yeah i guess yeah. but like not really because these movies are bad <laughs> yeah like good actors in here completely wasted Mm-hmm. Like Tim Blake Nelson, just like does nothing, gets his head blown off in one scene. <laughs> yeah, and Reggie Cathy, and yeah, all these guys. Yeah, Kate Mara. No, nobody's used well. Jamie Bell. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Reggie Cath. That's right. That's yeah. the guy from House of Cards and The Wire. Yeah. yeah, he's got like a good voice. It's just like, yeah, he mm-hmm. he, he definitely brings some gravitas to it. But like at right. the end of the day, it's not enough to save the movie. It's just like every other element is working against him. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, probably the best actor in here. Like he probably right. was the best performance. Yeah, because you know he 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 had that presence to him. You're right. Yeah, like with like you know, Oz and The Wire. But yeah, again, like as great as I'm sure people know, like as great as like certain actors can be, you can only do so much when the writing's is like it's completely yeah. lackluster. When the, when yeah, when the story's terrible, the directing and everything. Yeah, it's like they're like a Phantom Menace thing. <laughs> but even even <laughs> those movies, I, I, you know, as yeah. flawed as the prequels are, like those are, I, I get like much more out of like this is like to, like completely useless. Like there's like no yeah. reason to watch this. Those at least yeah, have their moments. Like this is like yeah, totally fucking dour and depressing. Yeah, there's there's not a single thing I like about it really. No, I guess <laughs> everything I say about it, it's like a backhanded compliment. Like, okay, it's short. At least you could get through it, right? If like your kid drags you to go see it when it came out, like at least you could get through it because it's so fucking short. But there's no reason to like give a shit about anything happening in this movie. The ending is terrible. Like that, where they? What? Do, what should we call ourselves? <laughs> the human Torch and his Torchettes, and it's like, how about? The, the thing that nobody wanted and the thing's like and they try to do that butting heads thing again but like yeah like they've like, had we like we all know you can take them dude it's, <laughs> it's like their like, only fuck. interaction in the movie pretty much maybe there's yeah. like one or two but at, at least <laughs> not that it was done particularly well like in the other two movies that was like a running gag but this is like yeah like they barely I think like Michael B. Jordan probably was like the least amount of screen time out of all of them maybe yeah you want to see all of them together a lot um 
and, you know, it has to make sense in the story, but also, you know, write as many scenes as you can where all four of them are interacting. Yeah, because that's part of, of the fun, isn't it? Because yeah. it's an ensemble. Yeah. You want to see, like, how, the you know, this guy acts from... That's, you know, that's part of, like, good writing. Like, how, like you know, different characters act differently yeah. depending on who they're talking yeah. to. And the Avengers, yeah, the scenes of, like, six of them together, like, all talking to each other. It's like, yeah, that's great. Like, Iron Man butts in, Hulk butts in, and <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Captain America says something, Nick Fury says something, Black Widow says something. Like, yeah, it's like, holy fuck, this whole movie, they, they aren't together at all. It's like, they're off in their little bad scenes on their own. <laughs> and, it, you know, they make such a big deal out of this father character, who ultimately doesn't do like he he just dies at the end like spoiler or whatever who gives a shit but like, yeah no, no, he, like, it's just okay. do nothing with him yeah yeah it's just nothing like okay so why'd you even put that in if it's like half the movie's like all this shit and then yeah it's uh, it's so it's, like lightweight it goes again nowhere. like you said yeah that's part of the fun a lot of those like mcu movies particularly the avengers ones like infinity war like i mean man i sorry iron man meets dr strange like oh what do you make balloon animals and then yeah, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, like that's that's what people like. Not not just the action, but like the banter and like. You yeah, know. this is like a, a textbook example of everything that could go wrong with a movie, not just a a superhero movie, mm-hmm. or a studio movie, just a right. movie in general. Yeah, in general, it's just come. It's co- a complete mess. <laughs> it's a complete and utter mess. It has no tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it goes from wacky shit to serious drama to death and murder and Cronenberg fucking craziness. And it's like, what is any like? Your brain can't fathom what it's trying to say or do at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I, I hate numbing. it. I, I think yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. yeah, I haven't I haven't rewatched it since. I made that video about it years ago. I feel the exact same way. Yeah, there's no, no reason. It's not like, oh, maybe it'll get better. Like, no, it's not even like no. that. F- that much fun to make fun of, really. No, that's the thing too. They they have no camp value, like gaudy. The you other know, like, yeah, we, we like, <laughs> God, even yeah, gaudy, like right? That. Like, yeah, you like yeah. making fun. Yeah, we we quote gaudy all the time, like vicky enough like, or like the room you know like the famous ones like people yeah can, like it's Even not the like the first that. fantastic four it's like that's what i was gonna say like they have their yeah. parts in it it's so are, like, silly funny. like ring the thing picking up the ring and yeah you know, that shit like that him in the trench coat him making a, a hole in the hospital room and victor von doom casually walks in it's like hey. what's going on here <laughs> yeah hey what's up like uh, <laughs> you know this is just nothing in this movie like that no and not that i want the movie to be a joke like i can respect a movie trying to take itself seriously, have a serious tone. I do like that. I mm-hmm. like dramas. I'm not just, I don't want like dumb shit, you know, I, I, you know, but you have to do it well. You have to yeah. actually make me care about what's happening. And it like, it all comes back to the writing and the characters. Like I did not give a fucking shit about any of them. They were so poorly written yeah and even and like just so the way washy. even just like the way the movie shot i find is like very dry it's a lot of shot reverse shot yeah and That's again like too. like you're saying about drama like you know we mentioned like the dark knight and logan those are obviously like very serious i don't consider yeah, them like joyless though they have enough levity to them they're engaging yeah. and, and, and can be moving they're like they're not just yeah. like blah like help me read <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Again, the, the the Chronicle movie, which Josh Trank made before, that's a very different kind of movie. Lower budget, and it was found footage. So it's mm-hmm. not about, like, the blocking of things necessarily. Um, there's there's a different... There's obviously creative choices you need to make with how you film yeah. the movie, but it's not as important as, like, this, where, you know, it's a, it's kind of like a regular movie. Like, you know, an invisible camera in the scene. You're like the... You don't know. You're the observer or whatever. It's like, yeah, the way he frames everything, blocks everything. It's very bland. Static. It just has, and, yeah. Yeah, obviously, you know, that, that's part of the filmmaking process. The idea is, like, you don't want, like, people to be aware of that process. Like, oh, that this is the cut. This is blah, blah, blah. Like, if you're telling a story well, you're not going to notice that those elements. At least, like, not in a bad way. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, in this movie you notice it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so bland. And then here, and then yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> I, I was thinking like the scene where like Von Doom walks in on them like flirting or whatever. Kate Mara and Miles Teller. It's like the way that scene is shot. It's just like okay, he walks in, pan up, like nothing interesting going on there visually. And you know that's something good about the Sam Raimi Spider Man's too. You yeah, know, you see like the, a lot of style with the way he frames everything. That's like one of the best things about it. Um, yeah, particularly even the new Doctor Strange. 
Yeah, yeah. Which I like. Right, yeah, and that one too. Yeah, like the, uh, like yeah. you know, like the famous scene in Spider Man two when they're like trying to you know, the surgery scene, they're trying to remove Dr. Ox tentacles, like you know, a lot of different sh- you know, different angles. Yeah. Like it's like from the even just tentacle. dialogue scenes in that. Yeah. It's just scenes of people talking are more interesting. Yeah. The way they're framed and what have more meaning and purpose like, to like them. Like business, than, than you know, like what they're doing in the scene. Yeah, like the way it's yeah. staged, not just like sitting they're changing a locations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, there are different locations. They go to a coffee shop and talk, and like, okay, this is a new location. It's not like this whole mm-hmm. movie's in a fucking lab, right. and it's all white and gray. Mm-hmm. It's like, Jesus Christ, it's like, I'm falling asleep here. Drab, it's like more <laughs> boardroom scenes. Like, this is not succession. Like, we don't need, like, so much focus on, <laughs> yeah, like, the, the really. inner dealings of the business. It's like, you know, fight, <laughs> save, like, a cat in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this shit. I really hate this movie. This is like, yeah, this is terrible. It's this crap. is terrible. It's one of the worst <laughs> movies I've talked about with you. Like, it's yeah, worse it's worse than, than like, Eternals. Yeah, yeah, it's worse than any movie <laughs> we've ever talked about. Like even privately, <laughs> like <laughs> this is like one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I couldn't fucking believe it. And mm-hmm. yeah, bombed horribly. It does, it definitely is warranted. Um, so let's just get into ratings. What would you give it? Uh, five star uh, yeah and one more thing you know again it's not a superhero mm-hmm. movie like consider like the, the best blockbuster that came out there like Mac, Mad Max Fury Road it's so colorful it's so vibrant and like you know this, uh, the action's incredible like this is just like nothing it's just like it blows that out of the water yeah it's a one out of ten yeah yeah mm-hmm. what about you <laughs> well uh I don't know <laughs> it's, a, it's a half star it's fucking yeah, yeah. shit i hate this movie i really i would not recommend anyone sit to no. this it's not even like to it's not even fun to watch like mm-hmm. those other two okay you want to watch them go ahead yeah Th- this is awful yeah it's not like harmless or, like, i don't even know if harm. i want to see it is harmful yeah <laughs> i don't know if i want to see a fantastic four movie after this it might be ruined for me well, at least um, we got we'll some see. time. It's as of now, as is like two years ago. Uh, sorry, two years away. Maybe uh, yeah, by the, the time one. it comes out, people will be watching this video to be reminded of what what could go wrong with yeah. this formula. This one's from 2015, so it's about seven years old. Yeah, it was like right before we met. It came out in a few months. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, yeah. I I really. Like I don't go into things hating them. I really tried to find something to like about this. There's yeah, there's nothing. nothing in this. <laughs> there's not a single fucking thing to like about it, other than it's short, which makes it less pain you have to go through for a longer amount of time, and and the fact that like, <laughs> um, you know, some of the actors in it are good, and they're like, um, like Reggie Cathy, he brings some yeah. like, cre- he bring he brings like a remote amount of credibility to it, but mm-hmm. like that's it. Like that's like all I can say about it. It's like positive. It looks right. like shit. It's boring. It's an yeah. awful superhero movie. Gets none of the beats right. It's a mess. It's a studio interfered mess. Yeah, um, I'd be interested to like, yeah, cover more of those because those are fa- like, like Alien Three. Uh, not, not that that like that's nearly as bad as this, but like, you know, like famous, like you know, behind the scenes drama. You know, like movies like don't, that. Don't that worry, like, darling. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, like just like not everything. Everybody was fighting and squabbling about what the movie should be. Like they're like, yeah, you know, famous examples like that. Are like uh, I'm trying to think of like another one. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, like Showgirls. Is that something like that? But yeah, you know, like you know, like it's yeah. like notor- It's like more bigger than the movie itself. Even just like how bad uh-huh. like it got bungled in you know the production process. Yeah. Exactly. All right, well, that's Fantastic Four. Let's move on to questions. I got a couple. You can answer them, too. Sure. Um, this is from, like, my episode two thread, but we're recording this before I posted episode two, so mm-hmm. I'm going to post another thread. If you want to leave questions, go on the Ralph the Movie Maker podcast Reddit, ask questions there. I'll answer them for you. Um, so this is the first one. It's kind of relevant. It's from Greenhood 300. Since John Krasinski was cast as Mr. Fantastic, has has been a favorite dream cast that came true for me. Uh, what is a recasting dream cast for any movie show game that you had in mind? Like a um, dream casting of like a character from like even a book or something. Um, hmm. Movie adaptation, the... a remake. I don't know. What? Do you, uh, yeah. What? What do you? What, what do you think? Like books or do, like like characters that are? Yeah, you can exist? do books. Like anything that you. Yeah. Because I know you you don't watch like anime or anything. Like, oh, Ooh. I want to see this guy cast Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever. I've seen a little yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, 
Let me think about that for a second. Um, yeah, even if they wanted to do like a sequel to a movie that's like old, like if they wanted to make a Heat two, which there is a Heat two book, like you know, you could get De Niro, but it's kind of like I, well, I, I think it would be better to recast it, right? Like <laughs> I know uh, Pacino specifically mentioned like Timothy Chalamet, he would want to take over that part. I I could see that. Um, oh, that'd be interesting. I don't yeah. know. I mean, do you have one? I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of a good one to mention. I mean, looking um, like actors, younger actors. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't know if I really have an answer for that, either. Um, you could say like a joke answer, even. Um, sometimes <laughs> I guess like, um, when I was little, I don't know if you did this too. Like, you know, when I'm coming up with like movie ideas, like, oh, so and so could be this character, like less like as opposed to like characters that already exist, more like ones that I came up with, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I guess I, I have I've done that before. Yeah. Well, like usually, good writers do that. They like write like Tarantino does that. He writes for like certain actors or the like, Coen Brothers. Yeah, like uh-huh. like yeah, like yeah. They have like people. The, the uh, Safties for Uncut Gems. I think they wanted Adam Sandler. I think they wrote it for him. They're like mm-hmm. if Adam Sandler's not gonna do it, we're not gonna make it. <laughs> Which is like right. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. yeah. I, I can't imagine anybody else in that pot. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but it is interesting, like, the idea, like, casting, like, younger actors in, like, famous roles. Because, like, you know, there are a lot of, like, you know, actors our age that are, like, coming into their own, like, making, you know, becoming bigger stars. It's cool to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Casting's a hard thing. Like, mm-hmm. even, like, for celebrities, when you make, like, a biopic. You know? Yeah. Yeah, like, Austin Butler is Elvis or whatever. Yeah, I think, that, I think that worked well. Uh huh. I thought so too. He worked really well for that. I really liked Ana de Armas in uh, Blonde. I thought she was really good as Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. Um, or like Tara know, Egerton. Like and, I like Tara Egerton as Elton John. Like sometimes, like uh-huh. you know, it could be tricky with like biopics. I think just because like yeah. you know, I like, like I liked Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury. It was just the movie sucked and yeah, his performance was <laughs> messy because yeah, it's just the, the directing. I don't even blame him. I think he's a good actor. Right, um, he's, he's good as, as... It's funny, this is kind of like a little side note, but like, he was in that movie, The Little Things, which I saw, you didn't. Um, mm-hmm. And like, I kept like expecting him to be the bad guy, just because he has like an interesting <laughs> presence. It works really yeah. well as as Elliot, as Mr. Robot, because he's kind of like a, an oddball anyway. But it's like yeah. something about him, like, I'm not talking, I don't mean like personally, just like a screen presence, like, it's, yeah. it's something kind of like off about him, which I, I find yeah. interesting. Yeah. Which is good, and uh, he, he plays the James Bond villain. No yeah, time. right, yeah. And yeah, the, even, like, the master. I know he had only, had like, a small pot in that, but he's, like, an interesting... Like, who's this guy? He's just kind of got, like, an interesting <laughs> vibe to him. Yeah, like, he's he's good. Or, like, uh, you know, Jesse Plemons. He's, like, not, like, exactly our age, but, like, it's cool to see him, like, becoming a big... Star. Like, Jesse Buckley, too. Like, the, the two of them from I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Mm-hmm. And, um... Cause I saw like a tweet once. It was like you know, like from Mother's Day. Like, who do you see like could they could play your mom in a movie? Like, I think it's like Jesse Buckley. Not that they look exactly alike, but just kind of like, <laughs> her, yeah. like to, to me, and, like, yeah, she's great. Like we saw in Men. Like, yeah, like it's cool yeah. to see like new, like exciting talents. Yeah, I don't really have anything for that, but yeah, those are good answers. I now like I'm wondering, like going off of the who who asked the question. What was the guy's name? Green Hood 300. Green Hood. Uh, are they actually, is John Krasinski playing him? Is is Or is that, the, you think that was just for Doctor Strange? He said it's like a fan favorite dream cast for him. Right. Or but, her. But or them. Do, that so, doesn't mean. But, but like, we don't know if I, he's yeah, exactly, actually playing like, him. Sure. We don't know that. But at least he got to see that. In his, at least that's in his brain memory bank. <laughs> yeah. He got to see it in Doctor Strange. Yeah, we don't know for sure. Um, I'd like to see them go with unknowns, kind of like with like he was a totally unknown, but like you know when they cast Michael Keaton as Batman, people were like what the fuck, you know? Because I mean, obviously Tim Burton knew what he was capable of because he worked with him on Beetlejuice and that worked really well. But I kind of like something like a little more out of the box. It doesn't have to be just like somebody we've already seen in like three other movies. Yeah, I feel like yeah, like there's a lot of comic book movies out there that I'm like yeah they cast them pretty well. Like I I couldn't think of anyone better. You know, like I'm not a huge comic book fan either. Where I'm like, oh, I, I'd love this obscure character to be cast as a. Uh, yeah, I mean Marvel's. I think it's been. Yeah, just Yeah, I think, been, yeah, I think <laughs> Marvel's been pretty all, on the ball, pretty much. Like, you yeah, know, in terms that, of that's like, one of the best things about who plays who. Them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
is the casting. They usually get great actors. Yeah. You know, they're right on the money, right? Yeah, like Paul um, Ryan, right, Zayn, so man. Yeah, I like all those guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good choice. Um, all right, so one more question because it's been we've been going long. Tyler sure. Perry's bra asks. Uh, speaking of Disney remakes, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, whatever it is, is yeah. set to have one. What are your thoughts on the original? Um, I, I really liked the movie. Um, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I think I kind of watched. I I remember. I think I watched it more yeah. like when I was kind of like in middle school. I think I had yeah. watched it when it's I was. It's been a long time since I've younger. seen it, so I can't like honestly say. We watched I it. Remember, a... uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you know, it's a dark story. Mm-hmm. I, I think we've talked about this movie or this story before. It's a dark mm-hmm. story. It has a very dark ending. And yeah. like the Disney one kind of, you know, makes it a bit lighter. Understandably, because, you know, the ending yeah. in the book is like, you know, everybody dies and Quasimodo yeah. like cradles himself beside, <laughs> you know, Esmeralda's yeah. corpse. It's really disturbing. Yeah, yeah in the grave, he buries Obviously, himself Obviously, right? I don't think you could fault <laughs> Disney for changing the ending in that instance. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I would have liked that <laughs> oh, ending, geez. actually. That have, <laughs> I thought that would have been great. great. <laughs> it would have um, been very different from... Like, if this new one ends that way, that'd be cool. But I, That would you know, be who fucking... Like, probably not. People would be fucking bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I, I do. I like the the, uh, the ninety six one a lot. I, I really love. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a side note too, but like I like when um, movies like they kind of like change up the logo a little because obviously like, you know at the time the the famous Disney logo is but like you know they show it but the music's just like the church bells like you know boom. I like like when movies do that. They kind of like mess with the yeah. logo. Like it feels like you know distinctive. Like all right, like this is like not like the usual experience and. Yeah, I like the oh, yeah. voice cast a lot. Like, I, I think it did a good job, like, all things considered, because it is kind of like, it, you know, it is a tricky balancing act, like, making, like, a. this was still in the middle of the Disney res- renaissance. This was, like, towards the end, because they, they had done The Lion King and then Pocahontas, and then this this was after those. And, yeah, I, 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 lo- the, I love the score. Like, the songs are great. Like, Frollo is a good villain. Yeah, like... Yeah, I, I quite enjoy the movie. Yeah. Like, it, it has an ap- like an epic scope to it. Mm-hmm. Similar right. to like Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I'm not as big a fan of it, but I'll, you know, I'll see it again. I'll watch yeah. it again. It's not like one of my favorites from them. Um, okay, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was fun talking about Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'll probably I think next episode's around Halloween, so I'll probably talk about something horror related. I'm thinking Body Snatchers. <laughs> which is yeah which is those are great oh yeah the 70s <laughs> that, that the 70s was, one is the one i've seen and that's a really good yeah movie. yeah i've seen the original one too um so i might do that okay uh thanks for watching uh again we're on spotify now so flame on check that out flame <laughs> on <laughs> i am the human torch all right bye bye